for the last five years, we are going through terrible situations where because of COVID, because of different situations, we are going through a lot of suffering. So there may be a lot of questions to the believers saying that, why is this suffering for me? I believe Jesus Christ and I should not have any suffering. So a lot of prosperity preachers also preach, if you believe Jesus Christ, you have blessing. What blessing it is? Everything they tend to preach out of context and they speak about the materialistic blessing. But today, I would like to encourage your hearts. The theme of the sermon today is suffering in believer's life. Okay? So let us go to the first scripture. It's already, uh, I hope you guys are seeing. So I'll read the scriptures as well through. So 1 Thessalonica 3, 4 to 5. So the Satan's purpose is to destroy the faith of a believer. Okay? God wants us to grow in faith, but the Satan wants, and Satan's purpose is to destroy our faith. We see this, Paul writing in 1 Thessalonica chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. For when we were with you, we kept telling you beforehand that we were to suffer afflictions. Just as it has come to pass, and just as you know, for this reason, when I could bear it no longer, I sent to learn about your faith, for fear that somehow the tempter had tempted you, and our labor would go in vain. So what Paul is telling here is, to the Thessalonica church, which he has planted as part of his missionary journey, to the Thessalonica church, saying that he was worried. He was worried about the Thessalonica church, that they are going to fall in faith, because the tempter, who is the tempter here? The devil, the Satan. So Paul is telling that the Satan will destroy your faith. So he was worried. So what is the goal of the Satan here? To destroy your faith in trials and sufferings. Okay? So how do we overcome this? How do we overcome this? 1 John 2, 14. I write to you fathers because you know him who is from the beginning. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the evil one. How can you overcome the purpose of the Satan when he tries to destroy your faith? He is through the word of God. When you, when you have the word of God in you, you can overcome the evil. You can see the second part of the scriptures. I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. What is the word of God here? The word of God is the Lord Jesus himself. The gospel will help you to overcome this evil one. So when the, when the tempter tries to destroy your faith, when you are facing afflictions, sufferings, trials, it is the word of God which is going to help you overcome the purpose of the Satan. So it is the time of your suffering and trials you may be wandering here, in, here and there. You may be going and talking to people. Nothing wrong. You can get encouraged if you are talking to a believer who has a gift of encouragement. But if you are going and talking to a person who doesn't understand the God's purpose and God's eternal plan, then they will discourage you. But what you are supposed to do? You are supposed to meditate on the word of God to destroy the purpose of the Satan when the Satan tries to defame your faith. Okay? So now... Next section. The next section is basically, I want to show you the purpose of God in a believer's life is to suffer. You may be shocked to hear this. I'm not a prosperity preacher here to tell you that when you accept Jesus Christ, you will not have suffering. That is unbiblical. That is false preaching. I will show you now next in scriptures, which clearly shows that Jesus Christ suffered and the life of a believer also is to suffer. Okay? I hope you are with me till here. So let us go. Mark verse 8, 34 and 35. Jesus, and calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loves his life for my sake and the gospel's sake, will save it. Right? So what Jesus is telling here is, if you want to follow Jesus, if you have accepted Jesus Christ, 
you are supposed to follow the cross deny to self daily you will have troubles suffering trials every day and when you say the cross is nothing but the suffering so if you have to follow the lord jesus christ you are supposed to die daily daily it is not once in a while you should be ready to stand in faith for the suffering on a daily basis if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters yes and when his own life he cannot be my disciple so how can you be the disciple of lord jesus christ so here basically while you are interpreting scripture here it doesn't mean that you have to hate your mother children brother sisters you may be getting shocked it is in relative comparison to lord so it is the lord it is our lord jesus christ who has to be first in comparison to the lord jesus christ you are sub, you are supposed to hate others in comparison to jesus christ so what it means is there may be situation during the covid time so many people have lost their parents their, their mother it could be their father it could be the children it could be so what was the situation of your faith, faith at the time the entire world was going through the terrible situation of suffering during covid what was the stage of your situation of your faith when when you lost your young child or you lost your mother or you lost your father or you lost your spouse so that is what jesus christ is telling you have to love me more even more than your mother father sister children and everyone so you are supposed to stand firm in faith towards the lord jesus christ in comparison to your family john 15 20 remember the world that i said to you a servant is not greater than his master if they persecuted me they will also persecute you if they kept me my word they will also keep yours so is there persecution how can you say that like you know have enjoyment when i follow jesus christ the suffering will be of various kinds it could be diseases it could be persecution it could be financial problem it could be your spouse or it could be your neighbors it can be various forms of trials you are going to go through in this life a lot of false preachers tell you just tell with your mouth that jesus is my savior and i am a sinner then you are saved no 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 absolutely not it should come from your heart it should be born again experience your life should be a testimony to tell saying that there is a change in life you need to repent of your sinful nature which you tend to manifest day in day out and then you need to submit your life to the lord jesus christ only then you are saved that is the gospel okay let's move on first peter 221 for this you have been called because christ also suffered for you leaving you as an example so that you might follow in his steps but what believers want they want jesus to suffer but they don't want to suffer when they get trials when they get suffering they grumble they say why god is testing me what i have been praying i have been reading word of god i have been going to church i am participating in church activities but still why is god doing this do you see there is suffering for a believer what here peter is telling very clearly is jesus suffered for you now you suffer for jesus and follow his steps everything what jesus has gone through are you ready to face it the excruciating pain what jesus has gone through in the first century the lashes on his body 39 and the thorns which was put on his head and the cross which he was weighing when the flogging was happening usually that was the most uh, demeaning punishment to any person at the time in the first century and when people were flogged their intestines used to fall and they used to not go to the cross crucifixion was the common way of punishment in the first century so but jesus christ after taking the 39 lashes also he was able to sustain and he was able to take the cross and uh, nail on the cross are you ready to take the same step the scripture is very clearly telling i am not telling it you can see peter is telling god has set you as an example so that you might follow in his steps 
are you ready to take the persecution if you don't know the word of god if you don't preserve the word of god what will be the situation when when you don't have the bibles later how do you meditate the word of god here i have shown in first thessalonica 3 that said satan's purpose is to destroy your faith and it is through the word of god you are going to overcome the evil you overcome the satan and if you don't meditate the word of god and if you don't know the word of god in those days when you don't have the bibles how will you sustain james first chapter verse second and three james is telling when you face trials of different kinds count it all joy my brothers when you meet trials of various kinds for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness count it all joy all joy not some joy limited joy minimal joy count it all joy when you meet trials of in different version if you see niv version you see it as all kinds here it is various kinds grammar is very important when you are reading the bible it means a lot so that it the trials is not of limited type the trials of varial types of all types your day to day life is a life of trials a believer's life is a life of trials so you know the testing of your faith produces steadfastness so what what james is telling he is count it as joy but what will be the situation of us when we face the trials and sufferings we groan we grumble we are weak in our spirit we don't pray we don't read the word of god we get disappointed by god and we keep we keep aside everything but here james is telling count it as joy when you face trials of different kinds acts 14 21 22 when they had preached the gospel to that city and had made many disciples they returned to lystra and to iconium and antioch strengthening the souls of the disciples encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying that through many tribulations we must enter into the kingdom of god so what will the prosperity preach i am a sinner and uh, jesus is my savior you are saved but what the scripture is telling in the uh, verse 22 you have to go through many tribulations in order to enter into the kingdom of god it's not straightforward guys you have to go through tribulations you have to go through sufferings in first thessalonica 3 verse 2 and 3 and we sent timothy our brother god's co-worker in the gospel of christ to establish and exhort you in your faith that no one be moved by these afflictions for you yourself that know we are destined for this we are destined for this means we are ordained for suffering it is god's plan that we need to face suffering the verse 3 is telling we are destined for this we are destined for suffering we are destined for trials second timothy 3:12 indeed all who desire to live a godly life in christ jesus will will be persecuted 